Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Throw, and on this edition it's Last Action Hero, brought to us by Sony ImageSoft and Bit Studios. The developer for the game Bit Studios is pretty infamous for creating some bad games. Not just for Sony ImageSoft though, they also created games for LJN, Mindscape, and even more recently Fox Interactive and THQ. Last Action Hero, the game, is based off the 1993 action comedy film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. And while the film was met with mixed reviews, it's one of those movies that as a kid I really enjoyed. Now to just give a little bit of info if you've never seen the film, you have a kid who's obsessed with an action film franchise, gets pulled into the movie, tries to get home with the help of the action film star in the movie, the villain of the movie ends up coming out to the real world and tries to kill the actor who portrays the action film star. While a little bit confusing, the movie ends up pulling it off pretty well, there's some good comedy things, a lot of cliches of action films, and it's a pretty overall enjoyable experience. I can't say the same though for the video game. The game is an action beat-em-up, but it suffers from some really bad hit detection, actually probably some of the worst hit detection I've ever seen in an NES title. The difficulty can be skewed sometimes, allowing you to be hit by a lot of enemies very quickly and having your health completely drained from full to nothing in just a matter of seconds. The only thing really good about the game at all is it follows the movie relatively well. So here we go with Last Action Hero for the NES. We start off with our startup screen, and then go into our first cutscene. All the cutscenes in the game are just a little bit of dialogue on the right side, and a picture on the left. There's sometimes multiple pictures for the cutscenes, but there's no moving images or anything. Also, without seeing the film, probably a lot of these cutscenes aren't really going to make too much sense. So here's our actual gameplay. Now this game was released pretty late in the NES library, so you could probably have expected better graphics, but this is what we get. The jumping works well, but as far as the hitting and kicking goes, it works um, only when it wants to. You have two main attacks in the game, just a straight up punch, which you use A to use, and then if you hit up on the D-pad and press A, you'll do a kick. The kick has a longer hit radius on certain enemies, but even though it looks like it always would hit farther distance enemies, sometimes it'll miss the enemy completely, and they'll be allowed to get in closer to do damage to you. So the punch ends up being the more effective move, even though the kick should be. Here is our first boss of the game, and you can see our health in the upper right corner of the screen. We have six hearts to start, and we slowly lose them, and when you lose all the hearts, you'll lose a life, and it'll just immediately refill your health. So sometimes, if you're not paying attention, you may end up losing a life and not notice it. There's no death sequence. You don't fall over and lose a life and start back at any point. You start right where you left off, and your health just regenerates. Our boss enemy health, you can see, is below our life count. Now, as far as strategy, on most of the bosses, we're just going to be standing and doing the kick to them. But for this guy, and the other guy who's going to throw axes at us, I usually like to jump over every other axe and deliver a jumping kick so that I don't take hits from him every single time. But, since the hit detection is pretty bad, and sometimes you won't be able to jump at all when you want to, some of the bosses in the game may come down to luck more so than actual skill in terms of getting past them without losing a life. So here is level 2, and this one's laid out a little bit differently than the previous level. We actually have to go from one side of the screen to the other, and then travel up to the next floor, and then repeat the process. It's hard to really uh, see while just watching the gameplay, just how bad the hit detection can really be at times. Uh, for your hits really to hit, there's a specific place where you really need to um, either start your attack, or attack the enemy if they're just sitting there, just so that you know you'll actually hit them and not have your punch here go through them or miss all together and let them do damage to you. If you can get this timing down, you should be able to have relatively no problem on most of the enemies in the game. Usually what I like to do is defeat any enemies that are obviously right in front of me or jump over them if I can to avoid them, and then right before you get to the end of a screen, right before a boss battle, take out the enemy behind you uh, and then focus on the boss, because the enemies, the regular enemies in the levels, can follow you right into the boss battles at the end of each stage. They also have kind of the Ninja Gaiden Syndrome, they will non-stop keep spawning depending upon where you are on the screen. For these enemies right here, they kind of throw their weapon in an arcing motion, just duck down in front of them, hit them a few times in their lower regions to defeat them without taking any damage from their projectile. The worst enemies in general to take out are the ones that are on platforms above or below you. When you're standing on a table or if you're jumping up to a platform, it can be really hard to hit enemies. For example, these beds here that are sitting there, when I jump on them, I bounce off of them. 
but the normal enemies in the game can just walk across them as if they were a normal platform, so that can be very annoying. Now this guy is kind of a mid-boss of the stage. I just stand in one spot, keep doing the kicking motion over and over again, and as you can see, every time he got close, I was able to hit him. Once in a while, because of the timing of the kicks, depending upon when you time your kicks, they may be able to eventually break through, but for the most part, you should get them to get stuck in a loop where you'll just be able to keep kicking and they won't do any damage to you. The same strategy goes for this guy as well. Just keep kicking and hopefully every time he gets close to you, you'll just knock him back and he'll never be actually able to do damage to you. With that boss defeated, we move on to the next stage of the game, which is a really short stage. I, I don't really quite understand it. They had to make it kind of a separate level altogether, but all it is is you move to the right, and it's right into another boss battle. I guess this is kind of like the main boss of the stage. The same strategy we did before uh, doesn't always work, but you can still kind of get him stuck in the loop with the kicks, and you should be able to kick him a lot more than he can do damage to you. If he starts doing a lot of damage back away from him, and then start doing the kick motion to keep him away from you. Now our next stage is similar to the one we just did where we're going to have to go from the left side of the screen to the right and then travel upwards, you know, go from one side of the screen to the other, keep going through a gauntlet of enemies, eventually we'll get to the end and fight the boss of the stage. The same problems that we had in the previous stage with platforms above you, the enemies are on, as well as the constant spawning of certain enemies are just as annoying in this stage as it was before, and the same mechanic works for the bed. When you jump on it, you're going to end up bouncing off of it. We have a quick mid-boss here, same strategy with the kicks to work on him, and then we continue on in the stage. This whole part of the gameplay can get very boring very quickly, as you can probably already tell. You're just going through the same mindless hordes of enemies over and over again as you travel back and forth between each floor. At least in some of the other movie licensed video games for the NES, some of the companies took some uh, leeway in terms of the design of the game, at least changing gameplay up a little bit, like we saw in games like Total Recall. And while that is still a pretty bad, awful licensed game, at least there was a little bit of variety in terms of the layout of some of the levels. Here's our boss for this stage. Now, I don't like to use the kicking motion against him. I like to duck down in front of him and then keep using the punch over and over again to keep him away from you. You should be able to uh, keep hitting him, knocking him away, and he shouldn't do any damage to you. Because if you do do the kicks against him, he will be able to fire out his projectile from time to time and still hit you with it. Now this stage, as you can see, we're on a big long highway with lots of enemies. This is one of the worst stages probably in the game. You have these upward slopes in the game, but you can't just